OHSAA provides excess catastrophic accident insurance for student athletes participating in all 24 OHSAA sports, as well as student managers, trainers, and cheerleaders. Unlike most other states, this coverage is provided at no cost to OHSAA member schools. And while we wish there was no need for such coverage, it provides peace of mind for students, school officials, and parents. If I didn't know anything about the Avon boys soccer team, how would you describe the whole experience? Um, we have, we're a really good team, we have really good chemistry, and we always, we never, we never are satisfied. We always want to work harder and build on what we've done. What's been your recipe for success this year? Mm, got me on the spot, but um, I don't know, just, we want to win. What have you guys learned from your two playoff games? That none of our playoff games are going to be easy, that we can't come out flat, and we always have to play on our toes. You guys got Amherst in the regular season. How big of a game is this against them? It's huge. I mean, it's the biggest game of our season to this point, and we don't want to end our last, on our home field, we don't want to lose our last game because we know we can beat them. What's going to be a key to victory? Keeping the ball, playing hard, and defending well. Give me a prediction for the game. You want to score or you want to pick who's winning? Whatever. Avon's on top. What does it mean to be a part of the Avon boys soccer team? Uh, it's a great feeling, especially with how much success we've had this year. Um, it really means a lot. Like throughout the community, they're all backing us up, and uh, we really feel their support. What's been the recipe for success? Um, just we're a great team, um, no matter. If we get down or anything like that, we always fight, we always play, each other, play hard, and we always have each other's backs. How much has Coach Dory had an effect on you guys? Oh, he's had a huge effect. Um, he knows what he's talking about, and we just listen to him and trust in him that he can tell us what to do to get us through the season and through the playoffs. What have you guys learned from your first two playoff games? That no, it's not going to be easy at all. Um, Westlake came for us, Avon Lake came for us, and at, we're the top dog. Everybody's got it for us right now, but we're ready for the challenge. How big is this game against Amherst? That's the biggest game of our career right now. This is huge. We want it. How bad do you want it? Oh, we want this really bad. What's going to be key to victory? Um, probably just whoever, whoever can score more. We got to fight hard, and whoever can squeak one in, then that's it's just whoever I think is going to score first. Give me a prediction for the game. Uh, Avon wins. I, don't, I can't tell you margin. Just Avon's going to win. What does it mean to be part of the Avon boys soccer team? It's an honor, like, we're doing amazing, best year we've ever had, and nothing's felt better so far in all four years. What do you attribute to the success? Uh, leadership, hustle, and all over the field, just making plays. How much does Coach Story have an effect on you guys? Oh, he's, he's a big factor in our success. He motivates us, make sure, he makes sure we're ready and all that. What have you guys learned from your first two playoff games? Uh, that we can win any game that we play our best at and we got any game that we actually try and put 100% towards. How big is this game against Amherst? Biggest of our career. All four years. Biggest we've ever played. Why is that? It's the farthest we've ever gone in the playoffs. What's going to be key to victory? Controlling the ball and who plays whose style of the game. That's give, the key. Give me a prediction. Avon wins. What does it mean to you to be part of the Avon boys soccer team? Uh, it's indescribable. This year has just been fantastic. The team, everything we've done, everything we've accomplished, and what we're still going to accomplish, just the words can't describe it. When you say what you're still going to accomplish, what do you have in mind? we got five games left. We don't plan on losing any of them. We haven't lost this far, and plan on keeping it that way. What's been your recipe for success this year? Um, just the overall team chemistry. Everyone likes each other. Everyone's played with each other over the past couple of years. Everyone works well together, runs off each other together. It's a success. How much has Coach Dory had an impact on you guys? He's brought us up for these four years, us nine seniors. He's come up with us, taught us everything, almost everything we know, taught us how to run, taught us all this stuff. So he's had a huge impact on us. How big is this game against Amherst? 
This is a this is a really big game. I know we beat them earlier in the season, but they're a different team. We're a different team too, so it'll be a good game. What's going to be a key to victory? A uh, key to victory is just playing our game. Don't don't get stuck trying to play up and down the field. We do good when we possess the ball, move the ball around, and attack from outside. So if we do that, we'll be good. Give me a prediction for the game. Avon's on top. What does it mean to be part of the Avon boys soccer team? Just a great great feeling because we, we've played together, the seniors, for 10 years now. We're, we're just a team. What's been your recipe for success this year? Chemistry and just t t taking care of business. How big is this game against Amherst? It's a huge game, bit, bit biggest kick game this season so far. And we, we just want to win so bad. What's going to be a key to victory? P playing our game. Give me a prediction for the game. If we play how we're supposed to play, we'll win. Coach, if I knew nothing about the Avon boys soccer team, how would you describe the whole atmosphere, the experience, the boys, everything? Um, I would explain it as if you know uh, you're describing friends. You know, I think that the coaches, staff, all friends that have grown up playing together, um, and the players. You know, uh, guys that have grown up together, and you know, and it's a good time of practice at team meals and. Uh, games, you know, I think that's a big part of the reason why we're successful is because we're friends, you know, we all enjoy being around each other and try, you know, accomplishing the same goals. You helped me there. I was going to say, what's your, been your recipe for success? Yeah. Other than the camaraderie, what else? Uh, you know, I think that we take advantage of our opportunities, you know, uh, we're a hardworking team, you know, I think that uh, for the most part, you know, the guys don't want to let each other down, you know, all over the field, you know, from the defenders, you know, and the goalkeeper all the way up front, you know, I think that everybody has shares the same responsibility, knowing that, you know, that we can accomplish something, um, but, you know, they're doing it for each other and, and not as individuals, you know, but we take advantage of our, our opportunities and um, it's important. How nice is it to have a top goalkeeper and a top striker on the same team? It's nice. I mean, uh, obviously, there's a lot. There's a lot of factors that go into being a successful team, you know. And uh, you know, obviously, those two stand out because they're at the in, in the front and in the back. And you know, shutouts you can record, and and goals you can record. Um, but there's a lot of good, a lot of good players in between those two that help them do their jobs. You know, so obviously anybody would die to have the top uh, one of the leading goal scorers in the state on their team and, and one of the top goalkeepers in the state on their team. But um, again, you know, it's a full team effort, and I think that's why what makes us a good team. What have your boys learned from the first two playoff games? Um, I believe that they learned that we have to play the entire game uh, in order to be successful and, and make a long run in, into this tournament. Uh, I also believe that they understand that everybody is trying to knock off an undefeated team. Um, I don't think that anybody really has anything against the community or, or this group of players, but when they're playing against a team that hasn't lost uh, yet this season, they're going to get their best effort from everybody that you know tries to play against us, and I think that that's something that they've understood over the course of the last week, you know, let alone the, uh, the end of the season. So it's, you know, uh, we've tried to learn from each game that we've played this year, but um, in terms of playoff games, they know that, you know, teams are gunning for us, you know. How big is this game against Amherst? <clears throat> well, it's the, it's the biggest game um, I've coached in, you know, in high school soccer, uh, in coaching period, you know, and I think that uh, for these guys, you know, uh, it's the biggest game that they've played in, you know, uh, probably through club and also through high school, you know, it's a meaningful game you know it's not just about that one game it's it's about community and it's about um you know like we talked about before friendship and, and relationships and, and memories and it means a lot you know so um i think this is uh i'm happy for the opportunity for these guys to be able to even uh, experience an event like this or, or a game like this and have the the feelings even a, a full 24 hours 48 hours before the game of feeling like the game was today you know so i think going into the game tomorrow you know, it's the whole experience and, you know, that's meaningful. How much of an advantage do you think you have over Amherst beating them during the season? <clears throat> uh, I don't know if it's an advantage, you know. I, I don't think it's a disadvantage and I don't think it's an advantage. You know, I think that, you know, at this point in the season, anybody can beat anybody. Um, just, you know, like we played our first two playoff games. You know, the other two teams could have come out on top and, you know, this game's no different. You know, obviously Amherst is a tough opponent. Um, you know, districts are tough to get out of because, you know, you're familiar with the teams that you've played. So. 
obviously we know that if we play what the way that we need to play, then you know we'll come out on top. You know, so um, if we don't, then you know the game could go anybody's way. But I feel like we're favorites in the game. Um, you know, from the time that we played in the beginning of the year, it was a three-one uh, win for us. You know, so you know the kids are confident in the fact that they know what they're capable of doing. But at the same time, they know that this is a new game. It's a new part of the season. We started over after the end of the season, and you know they got to come to play. What's going to be key to victory? <clears throat> key to victory is who wants it more. Uh, who wants it more? They're two pretty evenly matched teams, I would say. They have some superstars on their team that you know most high school teams would would die to have. Um, we have a very very good team. Um, as well, so uh, you know, it incorporates a lot of very talented players. I think the team that comes out on top tomorrow is a team that comes ready to play, and uh, you know, for 80 minutes, not for the first 10 or you know the middle 10. You know, the team that plays the best for the entire time, you know, it's going to be one goal game. You know, I'm I'm imagining it's going to be about a one goal game tomorrow, and I think that uh, whoever puts in more effort is going to come out on top. Give me a prediction for the game. Avon. Avon wins. Good evening, sports fans. Ohio Sportsnet is on the air. Playoffs are in the air. Division One Rocky River District Final from Avon Middle School in Avon, Ohio. The number one seed in undefeated Avon Eagles flying high, number four in the state, taking on another top ten team, the Amherst Comets. One of the only teams to beat Amherst on the year is Avon back in the third game of the year. Amherst also lost to one of the top teams in the state in St. Ignatius. And we are set. We are going to determine a winner here tonight. One team season ends. One team season continues on to the regionals. Hello, everyone. I'm Kyle Goodwin, joined by producer, guru, replay master Steve Peters, alongside Demetrius Hudson and Keith Allen on the cams. We're about ready, set for kickoff. Let's meet the Amherst starting lineup. Hi, I'm Max Momegat. I'm a senior, and I am the goalkeeper. I'm Dalton Sweet, a sophomore, and play left back. I'm Eric Armstrong. I'm a senior. I'm a center defender, and my nickname is Arm Week. I'm Jake McDonald. I'm a senior, and I play center defense. Hi, I'm Garrett Lakota, sophomore, and I'm right back. Yeah. Hi, I'm Marcus Schmitz. I'm a senior, and I'm left midfielder. Hi, I'm Mark Ferber. Senior, and I play center mid. My name is Andrew Souders from the Marion L. Steel High School. Uh, I play center midfielder, and I'm a senior. I'm Bradley Meaden, I'm right mid, and I'm a senior. Hi, I'm Connor Kokoda, a midfielder for Amish Steel, grade 12. Hi, I'm Josh Berkline, I'm a senior striker, and my friends call me Cat Daddy. Let's meet the Avon starting lineup. Austin Sani, senior goalkeeper. My name's Jess Miser, I'm a senior. Play defense. John DeMarco, sophomore, right back. Kyle Lavelle, senior, defense. Kevin McNair Sherry, grade 12, left fullback. Jack Boyle, I'm a junior, midfielder. Danny Minotti, I'm a freshman. I play right midfield. Nico Toledis, I'm a junior. Uh, I'm Avon center midfielder. Brendan Cannon, senior midfielder. I'm Ryan Reapus, I'm a senior center midfielder. My name's Ryan Boyle, I'm a senior, play striker. That was the entire starting lineups for both teams. We are underway here from Avon Stadium in Avon, Ohio, as the Avon Eagles are in their solid white with purple, purple numerals moving from right to left. Amherst in black with gold numerals and trim. Ball played forward. Josh Berkline, who's red hot so far for the Comets, giving chase. Five goals already in the postseason. Berkline coming in on Sandy, slides in, and Sandy with makes a great save. Austin Sandy called on. For, to make a great save in the opening moment. Josh Berkline, a pair of goals in the district semi against Strongsville, including one with four seconds left in double overtime to give the Comets the win and set up their match here tonight. And five goals in the last two games and just seven on the year for Berkline. So red hot lately, especially in the playoffs. Ball out of touch. It will be an Avon Eagles throw in taken by Kevin Manasheri, the left back. Eagles lose it out of touch. And Amherst will get the throw. Garrick Placota, the right back for the Comets. Sophomore will step up, take this throw. A very cool, crisp night here in Avon, Ohio. Looks like the precipitation wants to stay away. Ball comes in right side to Ferber. Stolen by the Eagles and one right back by Connor Clacota. He'll swing it back and they'll play it all the way to the left side. 
Try and build it up the left. Looking for Marcus Schmitz. And ball shielded, out of touch. Avon throw in. You have to see early on how the, the teams, what they want to do pressure wise, as this is a big revenge game for the Amherst Comets. One of their two losses on the year, a three to one loss, back their third game of the year to the Eagles. As the Eagles on the year, their only blemish came at a scoreless draw to Lakewood back on October 1st. I'm going to give you a quick prediction in this game. I'm going to say this game is going to come down to the wire. We might even have an overtime golden goal. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say the visiting team is going to come out ahead. Ball comes into the box. Meaden with a chance. Far bar hit it a little bit too high and wide. But so far, the Comets, two good chances on goal. One great save by Austin Sandy on Burkline. And that shot there by Bradley Meaden goes high and wide. Opening minutes here, first half on Ohio Sportsnet. And a quick substitution as Will Scherer Freshman defender will come into the game for the Eagles. Coach Chris Dore trying to get some quick teaching moments as Jess Miser will have a seat for the Eagles. Sandy's goal kick comes out. Placota gives challenge. Ball comes over to Meaden on the right side. Plays it forward, looking for Burkline. Burkline taken down and a restart coming up for the Comets just outside the D, straight on. In the fourth minute, Amherst going to get a very dangerous set piece here. It's like Ferber and Klakota are going to line up over it, and Connor Klakota will probably take this restart. Klakota on the year, the leading goal scorer for the Comets, 21 goals and 12 assists. Andrew Souter is the next leading scorer with 12 goals and four assists for the Comets. It'll be a great first chance for the Comets here, and Sandy ready for this one. Klakota shot right on, Sandy tip off the bar! Headed out by Avon, right back to Klakota. His shot blocked away, but not out. Amherst with great pressure in the early going. Klakota giving chase to that through ball, and Sandy will let it go over the end line. And Austin Sandy, his best friend, is the crossbar right now as he got a fingertip on that one, kept it out of the net, and we remain scoreless in the fourth minute. A great shot by Klakota, even a better save by Austin Sandy. He shows why he's one of the top goalkeepers, not just in Northeast Ohio, but in the entire state. The Eagles' first chance, get it up ahead to Poyle. And Ryan Poyle will lay it back. Ryan Repas swings it over right side. Trying to build it up, but good pressure and a foul going to be called against the Eagles. As Amherst controlling the majority of the possession so far and the attack. That was Avon's first chance to get over midfield, actually, and it took him nearly four minutes. Restart by the Comets. Play it forward. Flick down by Avon. Go out of touch. Throw in coming up for Amherst. Fans, don't forget, join us on Facebook. Go to Ohio Sports Net page and become a fan. Like us there. And also on Twitter, uh, handle Ohio Sports Net. Ball down the right side. Andrew Souders giving chase. And the linesman signals corner, but the head referee overrules him and gives a goal kick to Avon. Good shield on the play there. As the Eagles, again, playing stout defense, keeping the clean sheet here as Amherst is coming out. High pressure in the opening moments. No wind here tonight and no precipitation so far. It did rain most of the day, so the surface is just a little bit slick. But compared to the Eagles sectional final against Westlake, a downpour that went to shootout. Nothing to speak of so far. Ball knocked out of touch in midfield and the Comets will get a throw in. Very interesting black unis for the green, white and gold of Amherst. Burke line with a flick. Headed back near Ripas. Souders gives a challenge, and he'll earn an indirect restart on the dangerous play called against the Eagles. The big gun for the Eagles is Ryan Poyle, the senior forward. 25 goals on the year, 35 in his career. One of the top goal scorers in the state of Ohio. Garrett Klakota and the indirect restart. Dangerous ball into the box. Headed out by Avon. Sweet will swing it far side. Souders giving chase and knocked out of touch. Actually knocked off of Souders. And it will be an Avon ball throw in. Eagles are going to swing the ball left side onto the foot of Jack Poyle. Then a cherry long ball looking for Ryan Poyle. Wins the header, but nobody forward. It's going to trickle all the way down to Maximo Meggett. And the Comet goalkeeper will have this one. 
Seventh minute, first half, scoreless. Division one, Rocky River District final from Avon, Ohio. Eagles and White building the ball forward. Comes to Jack Poyle, left side. Swing on an overlap. Nico Toledis lays it back to Minicherry. Good challenge by Meaden for the Comets. And Souders will win it and runs right into the official. Official made a good challenge there and stole it away from Souders. Eagles continue the attack but lose it out of touch. It will be a throw in coming up for the Comets. On the year, the Eagles 17 wins, zero losses, one draw. Amherst 15, 2, and 1. Their two losses came to this on this same field to these state-ranked Avon Eagles and also defending state champion St. Ignatius. Ball left side, looking for Berkline. A little bit too far, a good hustle, but the ball go out of touch. Throw in coming up for the Eagles. Winner of this game advances to the regional semifinals next week. To the Sweet 16. Klakota with a flick. Berkline lays it back to Klakota. Connor Klakota giving good battle. Lay it back to Marcus Schmitz. Schmitz outside of left foot to Berkline. His header just missed Klakota. Eagles, though, having trouble clearing it and finally get the ball out of danger by Lavelle. Up to Ryan Poyle. And now the ball to Toledus. Toledus with space in the middle. Long ball looking for Poyle, a little bit too far. Skips all the way down to Meggett. Meggett's punt near midfield, won by the Eagles. And a nice save by Jack Poyle. Bradley Meaden has it, but tackled away by Avon. Up to Ryan Poyle. Going to try and swing it far side from Minotti. Knocked away, and Amherst on a counter now. Quick ball, played forward. Connor Klakota on a foot race. Sandy coming all the way off his line. And a hard collision as Klakota went down early, ran into Sandy. The ball goes out of touch. And it's actually going to be a common throw, and looks like Sandy's a little shaken up. Klakota beat him to the ball, and... Fell down, Sandy came out hard. And a hard collision with two of the top players on the field. And this is uh, something, if you're an Avon fan, you do not want to see is Austin Sandy shaking up. 30-52 to go first half. Good pressure by the Comets so far and a very aggressive play by the senior goalkeeper. The restart will be an Amherst throw in. And this is unfortunate for the Eagles because the training staff is coming onto the field, so Sandy is going to have to check out and come back at the next stoppage. Well, this hurts the Eagles in more ways than one. First of all, your starting goalkeeper and one of the top goalkeepers in the state is injured and has to come off and what coach Chris Dory might do is put his top striker Ryan Poyle in that he's over on the sidelines talking it over with the bench seeing if he might get a goalkeeper jersey and that's exactly what it looks like what's going to happen actually no coach Dory uh, overruled him there Well, originally Andrew Foy had the jersey on, and he takes it off, and he's giving it to Poyle now. Sandy's trying to stay on the field, but Ohio High School rules, if the trainer is called onto the field on a stoppage, you have to go out. So Sandy was just shaking up on the play. He shook it off, but he's going to have to check out at least till the next stoppage for the Eagles. And this hurts them two ways. One, they lose their goalkeeper for a moment or two, and their best striker now goes into goal. Be a good chance for Amherst to take advantage of this uh, unfortunate situation for the Eagles. Sandy walks off under his own power and I believe he's going to check right to midfield and get ready to sub in in the next stoppage. Tony Toledis checks into the game and he'll be a striker while Poyle is in goal. 
Marcus Schmitz to take this long throw in on the restart. Comes in near the six. We got a whistle, and I believe the official called a foul throw in. And doesn't hurt the Eagles one bit. So the foul throw in, they get the substitution, and Sandy will come right back in, and Poy will check right back to his striker spot. No harm, no foul for the Eagles. Also, some of the top scorers for the Eagles on the year. Nico Toledo, seven goals, seven assists. 15 goals and 11 assists in his career. Brendan Cannon, nine goals and nine assists. 17 goals and 19 assists on his career. And Ryan Repas, the leading assist man, three goals, 12 assists, 25 goals and 18 assists for the Eagles senior. Ball out of touch, and Connor Klakota will take this throw in now. Exactly 10 minutes in. First half comes in, Schmitz. With a header, header again, it's in for Amherst. And whoa, no, I think the official's gonna wave it off. An offside coming up. Oh my. There was a player in the six. Sandy came out with the original challenge. And the official waved it off. Throwing by Klakota, flicked on, and yes. Yes, there was. Amherst was offsides. Eagles get the benefit of a call there and keep the game scoreless. Amherst with the continued pressure, though. And stay tuned for the end of the game where we pick our JJHuddle.com player of the game. Amherst with a clear. You want to talk sports? You want to discuss tonight's game? Do it all at JJHuddle.com, the destination for Ohio's online sports community. Avon on the attack, looking for Poyle. Knocked away by Armstrong as Ryan Poyle nearly snuck behind the defense. And it's Sherry plays it forward for Jack Poyle. And ball go out of touch, throw in Avon. JJHuddle.com features updates, recruiting, scores, statistics, talk about all the state tournament playoff games, and, of course, the world-famous JJ Forums. Go to JJHuddle.com and get into the game. Off the long throw in, ball comes out. Fired back in by the Eagles, deflected. It'll go out of touch. Corner kick coming up for Avon, their best scoring opportunity here in the 12th minute. Repus with the corner kick coming up for the Eagles. And you got to look, you got to think Ryan Poyles, one of the men, wants to get on the end of this one with his head. 25 goals on the year for the Eagles senior. Comes in, near post, skips all the way through the box. Avon will control, try and knock it back in. Can't get a scoring opportunity now. Finally play it forward. Comes out of the foot of Ryan Poyle, trying to get free near the D, fighting through defenders. He's going to earn a foul. Restart coming up right at the top of the D for the Eagles. And this is going to be their best scoring chance of the game. Poyle showed his strength there with three Amherst Comets all over him. Got clipped, got the call, and a very dangerous restart coming up for Avon. Toledus along with Cannon over the ball. Ball played, Cannon, left foot off the wall. Going to go out of touch, and it'll be another corner kick coming up for Avon. So after the first 11 minutes, the pressure was put on by the Comets. Now it's reversed here in the last minute and a half. And Avon with a pair of corners and a set piece now. Pressure in Maximo Meggett in the Comet defense. Ball played far post, a little bit too far for everybody. Knocked down, comes right back out. A long shot, a little bit high and wide. As Daniel Minotti, the freshman, stepped up, put a good leg into it, just hit it a little bit too high. Minotti with four goals on the year. Goal kick coming up for the Comets. Out of touch, Avon will get the restart. Throwing coming up near Ryan Poyle. He'll flick it into the middle. Repas giving chase. Armstrong with a win and clears back near midfield for Amherst. Meaden with a good win. Burkline trying to get Meaden on an overlap. A little bit too far. And Lavelle will clear back to midfield. Bradley Meaden, good pressure for the Comets. Ball poked forward, Lavelle has to clear back near midfield. And the second time, Andrew Souders has got taken a blunt from the official. If I were Souders, I would just take the official down if he does that again. Ball played into the combat defense. Armstrong steps up, clears away a header. Challenge one by Burkline. Over to the left wing to Connor Klakota. Looks for Burkline and overlap, a little bit too far, out of touch. Throwing coming up Avon, 15th minute. We remain scoreless. The Amherst Comets and Avon Eagles, district final. 
Ball flicked on. Toledo's trying to get a touch. Loses control. And now the ball ping-ponged around. Finally won by Repas. Left side looking for Jack Poyle. Popped up. Poyle comes back and wins it. And a nice step by Bradley Meaden. Might have a break for the Comets. Uh, just a poor touch by Meaden. Lost control. And now a counter coming for the Avon Eagles. Toledis. Ball played left side. Cannon. Cannon's cross deflected. Comes in. Near the penalty spot. Nobody there. And it'll be cleared out by Amherst. Good defense by Jake McDonald. Menachery will play it right back in. And knocked right back out by Amherst. And a tough foul there by Menachery. Ran right into Meaden. And the official blows the whistle. Restart coming up for Amherst. Tune into OhioSportsNet.tv. Tomorrow night, Friday, October 28th, week 10 of the high school football season. One of the biggest rivalries in the state of Ohio is Maple Heights and Cleveland Heights. Two undefeated 8-0 teams will go at it from Maple Heights. The Mustangs is the defending Division II state champion. And the Cleveland Heights Tigers, first time in school history in the Ohio State playoffs. And right here Saturday, the 29th, we'll have girls soccer district final action as the number one seed in the Kent District Division I, the Brexville Bees host the Solon Comets, the third seed, at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Tune in for all the live streams, and then as soon as the game is over, we will restream the game and post all the archives to the website, ohiosportsnet.tv. Amherst in their black unis win the ball on the attack. Ball play far side as Mark Matos checks into the game, trying to give chase, and... Matos actually got injured right off the get-go. He's down, and the official's going to stop the clock with 23.55 to go first half. As I think Matos might have taken it in a region where he doesn't like it. He's kind of shaking it off. Just took an unfortunate bounce there. The referee's actually going to say Matos is going to have to check out. So Marcus Schmitz, the senior, will check right back in for him. Schmitz on the year, four goals, eight assists for the senior midfielder. Off the drop ball, Klakota will just play one back to Sani. And we will restart. 17th minute, clean sheet for both teams. We've seen good attack and good scoring chances from both. Austin Sani so far with the save of the game on Josh Burkline. Wesley tackled away by Minichari. And Toledis is free up the left side. He'll cut it back. Look for Jack Poyle in an overlap. A little bit too far. Garrett Klakota will run him down and actually play it off of Poyle. And, oh, they're going to say it actually went off of Amherst. So the Eagles will get a throw in deep on the left wing. Again, you got to think Ryan Poyle is the center of this one where it's coming to. Long throw in. Meggett started to come, went back, headed up by Amherst. Jack Poyle plays it right back in and then cleared out by the Comet defense. Avon with the ball played deep, deep back to the sweeper. Very fortunate to keep that ball in touch. Good save by Minichari. Sharon will swing it right side. In the middle, Souders has it taken away, and Dalton Sweet will run it down for Amherst. And a great step over by the left back. Frees up a little space, but his clear actually looked like it got deflected off of him. And the official... Originally, the linesman gave it to Amherst, but the official overrules it and gives it to Avon. Good crowd here from both, both sides. Throw in coming in, headed away. Good win by Lakota. Actually, that was Josh Berkline checking back. Sorry about that. The numbers here for Amherst are very, very difficult. I love the black unis, but they're not a broadcaster's best friend. We got a whistle, and what do we got? Amherst was going crazy for a foul throw-in. It was right in front of the Comet bench, and the fans as well joined in, and the official chimed in his whistle and agreed with the Amherst contingent. Foul throw-in against Avon. As the Avon faithful in the south end zone, the student section sits behind the goal. A good crowd there. Amherst with a good following as well on the east side of the field and the, the west side. 
for the Avon fans. It's starting to fill up. Klakota on a break. Trying to free up a little space. Looking for an overlap for Wesley. Poked down. Klakota wins it right back and then gets cut down. No call by the official. One back by Souders. Nice heel to Klakota. Ball deflected off of Klakota. Come all the way down to Sani. The official decided to swallow the whistle on that one, not call anything, and let the boys play. Deep punt will go off of Garrett Klakota out of touch. Throw in coming up for Avon. 19 minutes in, first half. Poyle with a throw in to Minicherry. His left foot. Ryan Poyle giving chase. Maggot comes off his line and hauls it in right at the top of the box. Avon got here off a penalty kick shootout win in the sectionals over Westlake. And then a 3-2 win where they held on over the Avon Lake Shoreman. Through ball coming to Poyle. Ryan Poyle trying to flick it on. Armstrong right there with him. The two, two big guys battling it out. Still loose, finally comes back. Ryan Poyle wins it. Trying to free up a shot, swing it far side. Dalton Sweet will play it out of touch. Throw in coming up for Avon. In the district semis, the Eagles got up 3-0 in the first half against Avon Lake and had to hold off a very aggressive Shoreman team in the second half. We got two goals but couldn't get the equalizer. And that's how the Eagles got here today. Long throw in comes into the box. Nobody there for Avon. Cleared out near midfield. Burke lines there for the Comets. A nice chest and turn by the senior. Laid off to Wesley. Back to Burke line. Tommy Wesley, the junior, will play it back to Klakota, the sophomore. He'll swing it far side. Matos runs down the loose ball. Nice through ball. Mark Matos can't get through two defenders, though. Good aggression being played by both teams. And finally, Matos gets a nice give and go down the wing. His cross comes all the way through. Wesley on an overlap. Great hustle. Good job defensively for the Eagles. As Jack Poyle got back there and cleared it out just in time. 21st minute. Avon now on the attack. Minotti cut off. Amherst gets it to Souders. Left side to Matos. Tackled away, and now Avon on the attack. Out of touch, Avon throwing. Amherst Comets got here in the sectional final, a 7-1 to one win over Illyria, and then a dramatic double overtime, 2-1 to one victory over Strongsville as Josh Burkline headed in the game winner with four seconds left on the clock at the end of the second overtime. Just seconds away from a penalty kick shootout, and Burkline decided to end it there. Nice steal by McDonald. Right foot's this one, but not out. As the Eagles have it, left foot is shot coming from far. And Cannon's shot goes a little bit wide. Wanted a deflection, the official says no, goal kick. And the Comets will have it there. Good attack by both teams so far. The Eagles withstood the first eight to 10 minutes of uh, high pressure by the Comets. Sandy with a couple good saves and a couple a little bit high and wides by the Comets. And the Eagles have answered back with some good counters, a couple corner kicks, and a set piece. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. Matos rushing down the left side. Knocked out of touch. Throw in coming up for Avon. Connor Klakota looks like he's going to line up this long throw in. Cota's throw coming in. Sandy comes off his line and steps right up and snags it out of the air. Good hands by Austin Sandy. Tries to hit a quick counter, trying to spin Ryan Poyle. Amherst will win it away. Ferber. Garrett Klakota has his ball knocked right back to him. And Klakota with a nice step over. Will reset, play forward to his brother, Connor. Connor Klakota putting on the Jets, trying to sprint through the Eagle defense, laying it forward, looking for Burke line and a nice step as Lavelle got there just in time, but one right back by Amherst. Wesley lays it back. Garrett Klakota taking his time, 
He's going to line up a through ball. He plays it down the right side. Nobody there for the Comets. Have it cleared right back to him. Laid up the wing again. Good tackle by Menacheri. Souders gets double teamed, and Avon wins it. Jack Poyle gets cut down. Ball out of touch. And the official is actually going to give the ball to Amherst on the throw in. Garrick Lakota on the throw. Under 16 minutes to go, first half. Cannon flicks it out. Souders heads it right back. Amherst trying to build it up the right side. Ball a little bit too far here, out of touch, throwing Avon. Don't forget, fans, all the games here on Ohio Sports Net are archived at ohiosportsnet.tv. Go to our archives page and locate all the boys and girls soccer along with football games all year long. Connor Klakota, long shot. Against the run of play, we got a whistle, and what do we got? We got a booking coming up. This is going to be coming up against Avon. Nico Toledis going to get booked on this one. He must have had something to say to the official after that last play. And the referee pulls out the yellow card, and Toledis is in the book. As Tony Toledis, the freshman, will check in for Nico. 15-20 to go, first half. Division one, district final. Loose ball, saved by Toledis, forward to Ryan Poyle. One away by Amherst, but then ball just stolen right back by Avon. Both teams just playing a little direct right now. Not much possession going either way. Wesley lays it back to Armstrong. Play a far side for Matos. They'll find Ferber on overlap. Nice little give and go. And then Mato's trying to play back to Ferber, and that one had a little too much pace on it. Skips out of touch. Throw in coming up for the Eagles. Mark Matos again showing some great pressure. Playing at that left mid position off the bench for the Comets. We saw that earlier this month here on OhioSportsNet.tv. When the St. Ignatius Wildcats and Comets went at it, Matos came off the bench and set up what looked like a potential game-winning goal, put the Comets up 2-1. to one. But the Wildcats came back with two goals and one of the two losses on the year for the Comets, a 3-2 to two victory for St. Ignatius. Cannon controls for the Eagles. Ball swung left side, Minichari. A nice move, trying to get free on his left foot. Taking it down, left of the box. Minichari gets all the way down, end line is cross, far side! Megat got a hand on it, and just enough. Flicked it far side. Minotti will run it down. Made it back for Cannon. Stolen away. Matos, a nice track back. Will win it for Amherst. Actually, there was Dalton Sweet. Ball in the middle. Poyle chests it down. Lays it off for Toledis. His through ball, nobody there. And Megat will come off his line and pick this one up with 13 minutes to go, first half. You want to talk sports, you want to discuss tonight's game, you want to talk about the upcoming season, playoffs, championships, and everything, do it all at JJHuddle.com, the destination for Ohio's online sports community. JJHuddle.com features news, scores, statistics, recruiting updates, playoff brackets, and, of course, the world's famous JJ forums. So for 99 cents a month, go to JJHuddle.com and get into the game. Avon on the attack, throwing down the left side for Ryan Poyle. Lay it back to Jack Poyle. Gets on his right foot, his cross. Headed out by Souders. One right back, though. Cannon, right side for Minotti. And it will be cleared out by the Comets. Dalton Sweet has it. Plays it in the middle to Ferber. Matos' ball knocked down and one away. Right back by the Eagles. Minotti, a nice move. Far side, Daniel Minotti. Couldn't get through two defenders, though. Back to midfield, and both teams just playing a little bit of kickball back and forth. And a late whistle, challenged by Berkline. A restart coming up as Will Scherer, the freshman defender, got knocked down right around midfield. 12 minutes ago, first half, the Eagles will get the restart. Brennan Cannon 
Senior midfielder to take this restart. Line drive, top of the box. Knocked out, a hard tackle by Menachere. We might have a booking here. As he went in, a little bit cleats up against Connor Klakota. And the referee pulls out a yellow card. That's a tough call against the Eagles. Very aggressive tackle by Menachere. Might have just got the studs up. Second booking of the game against the Eagles. This comes with 11.43 to go, first half. Referee still having a little chit chat with the players. Oh, I, I think I know what the players are trying to say. They're trying to get the fans out of the end zone. That's what they're trying to do. No fans behind the goal. Through ball down the left side. Klakota going to get chase. Wins it. A good save, but then out of touch. It'll be a goal kick. Interesting, in the district semifinal at this field, we had fans behind both goals. The Avon fans were allowed to stay. The Avon Lake fans were actually booted from behind their goal by the official. So playing a little preferential treatment there unless somebody decided to say something the official didn't like and he faulted the whole section. It's irony because there actually is police tape around the Avon fans, so. It looks like there's uh, some security guards down there too, keeping them in line. 10.50 to go, first half. And we got a whistle and a restart coming up. High kick, dangerous play against the Comets. Indirect restart taken for the Eagles. So after the first 15 minutes of a little bit back and forth, high pressure, both teams kind of settling in here. Stepping up the defense, playing a little bit more direct. Not much possession in the last 10, 15 minutes or so. Sandy to take this restart. Hits one in. Headed down by the Comets, looking for a quick counter. Connor Klakota lays it off. Meaden. Bradley Meaden gets free. Meaden's cross a little bit too far. It was right in between Ferber on an overlap and Klakota, but Meaden, good win back. But then lays it back, and it goes past Garrett Klakota out of touch. Throw in coming up for the Eagles. Ryan Poyle throws it into Cannon. Cannon, step over. Play it back up the left side. Jack Poyle, his ball knocked down, and Meaden wins it away, and Bradley Meaden with a clear, headed right back to Jack Poyle. Toledis gets cut down, and it'll be a restart coming up. Tony Toledis with a good turn, and Garrett Klakota got a little bit of the ankle. Restart coming from about 35 out on the left wing. Brendan Cannon to take it. Dangerous ball. Meg, it started to come, went back. The ball snuck all the way through everybody. That was a dangerous boil. ball as Ryan Poyle went down low for it. Jack Poyle went up high, and neither one could get a touch. Goal kick, Amherst. Hello, I'm Jack Poyle. I'm a junior midfielder from Ava Boys Soccer. You're watching Ohio Sports Net. 8.50 to go, first half. Amherst on a break. Ball tackled away as Garrett Klakota came all the way up from his right back position. And now the Comets are a little bit exposed on that side. Jack Poyle plays a forward, knocked down by Armstrong. Eric Armstrong will give chase. And a good win as Tony Toledis has it, but his ball goes out of touch. Throw in coming up for Amherst. Off the throw, Ryan Poyle, nice win. Long shot from the outside. Megat will just let it go wide. And you got to like the effort by the senior forward. He's working in traffic. He always has two and three bodies around him at all times. Amherst keeping an eye on one of the top goal scorers in the state. Eight minutes to go, first half. Remain a clean sheet for both teams. Armstrong on the restart. 
Ball flicked on. Bradley Meaden has it. In the middle, Cannon wins it for Avon. Plays it off to Jack Poyle. A very vocal Avon student section coming to life now. Ball play, Tony Toledas giving chase. Garrett Lakota, good speed to win back. Toledas still pressuring though, and it's loose in the box. Armstrong can't get it clear. Finally, Garrett Lakota will volley this one back out near midfield. Good pressure by the freshman for the Eagles. Bradley Mean against the run of play. Gets forward and has his ball knocked out of touch. Will Scherer got a foot on it. Throw in, coming up for the Comets. Comes in, Souders. Flicks it forward, and Cannon wins away from Schmitz. Souders tracks all the way over and wins it for the Comets. Andrew Souders trying to spin his way through a couple of defenders, out of touch. Throw in coming up, Marcus Schmitz. A quick long throw in, looking for Connor Klakota. It snuck all the way through, and Austin Sandy has it for the Eagles. Good thought by Marcus Schmitz, just could not find a teammate on that long throw. Sandy with a very deep drop kick. No wind here, and that went a good 70 yards. Ripas gets free. His right foot couldn't quite get much on it, and Meggett will come over and haul that one in. And a quick throw by Meggett. Gets it out near Connor Klakota. Klakota still giving chase. And the linesman's flag is up, out of touch. And it's going to be a Avon throw in with six minutes to go, first half. As Cole Plum, forward for the Comets, could not save that one. Long ball into the Amherst defense, headed out by Armstrong, swung all the way over to the right side. Too far, and Minichary wins it, plays it forward to Jack Poyle. Poyle with a nice move, Ferber with a nice track back. One back though, Repus forward for Ryan Poyle, ball flicked in, Meggett comes off his line and slides right at the feet of Ryan Poyle to haul that one in. Good build by the Eagles. She couldn't quite get it on the foot of Poyle. Souders with a flick, Schmitz loses it to Repus. Forward to Poyle. And a cherry, nice step over. He'll lay it back. Lavelle, driven ball right into Plum, deflected far side. Connor Klakota gives chase and a near steal. And the ball played forward by the Eagles. Ferber now, and a counter for the Comets. Forward looking for Plum. That one's going to skip too far. Out of touch with 4:40 to go. Scoreless. Hi, I'm Garrett Kokoda from Amherst Steel High School, and you're watching Ohio Sportsnet. Hey, this is Connor Kokoda from Amherst Steel High School Soccer, uh, and you're watching OhioSportsNet.tv. 4.20 to go, first half. Scoreless from Avon, Ohio, Division I, District Final. Off the goal kick. Loose at midfield, flicked on by Cannon for Avon. And McDonald will play it up the left side to Schmitz. His flick knocked out of touch. Throw in coming up for the Comets. John DeMarco knocked that one out for the Eagles. And looks like Connor Klakota is going to take this long throw. Comets are going to flood the box. Throw in coming in. Schmitz with a flick. Sandy comes out and hauls it in. Austin Sandy, very strong in the air, wins that one. And he'll try and hit a quick counter. It's a long, long ball for Ryan Poyle. Knocked down by McDonald. One away, though. Played left side. Toledis on an overlap. Tony Toledis can't quite get to that one, and it's going to actually go over the end line. And a goal kick coming up. A nice build as Repus proved why he's one of the top assist men in the area and the top assist man on the team for the Eagles. His ball just skipped a little bit too far. Tony Toledis couldn't run it down. Stay tuned for halftime here on OhioSportsNet.tv. We heard from the Avon Eagles in the pregame. We'll hear from the Amherst Comets from Garrett and Connor Klakota, along with Andrew Souders, head coach Brett Thompson, and the man of the hour the other day in the final seconds, Josh Berkline, senior forward, the last second goal against Strongsville. Through ball, Meggett comes out and hauls this one in. 
Hear from all those Amherst comments at halftime here on OhioSportsNet.tv. Just two minutes, 45 seconds away. Good defense being played by both teams here tonight. As the midfield's been a little bit direct by both teams. Uh, the possession, I wonder if coaches are going to talk about that at halftime. See if you can't get a string a little bit more passes together through the midfield. Headed back by Lavelle. Flicked on. Cannon gives chase with Ferber. Jack Poyle with a flick. Souders loses it to Ryan Poyle. And then wins it right back. Jack Poyle comes back for Avon. Forward to Ryan Poyle with a little space. Nice turn, but he turns right into Armstrong and knocks it away. Final two minutes, first half. Menacheri, free up the left side. And Garrett Klakota, great defense, wins it away. He'll clear one up. Connor Klakota lays it off and a nice flick. Schmitz, unfortunate. Tried to hit a quick ball and missed it. Eagles will answer back. Schmitz with the steal. Connor Klakota got a little space in the middle. Connor Klakota lines up a long shot. And Sandy is there for the save for the Eagles. Ambitious effort by Connor Klakota. Couldn't quite get a full foot on it. And Sandy was there. Off the punt, Schmitz with the win. Plum with a challenge into the middle. Ferber. Right side from Meaden. Then a cherry with a win. Meaden all over him. Takes him down and a foul coming up against the Comets. Very aggressive play by Bradley Meaden, and the official has a word with him. 40 seconds ago, Sandy on the restart. Long ball, near Poyle, chests it down. Tries to get a turn, nice step by Dalton Sweet. Clears it back near Connor Klakota. Beautiful touch on the trap and a heel ball. Ball four down the left side. Cole Plum is free with 24 seconds left. Connor Klakota is in the middle. Plum trying to line up across. Ferber is open far side. Connor Klakota near the D, trying to free up some space. Ferber, shot by Ferber from the outside, a little bit wide. Amherst looking for a corner, but it's going to go out of touch in the final seconds of the first half. Will tick away. And after one half a player, we're going to be scoreless here in the Rocky River District Final. Avon and Amherst, we're going to speak now. We're going to hear from the Amherst boys and head coach right here on Ohio Sports Night at halftime. Clean sheet for both teams. Josh, first, I got to go back to the, the district semi. How big of a game was that for you? Oh, it was definitely the biggest game I've played in. Like, Strong's was a great there? opponent. And I, was, I was nervous, definitely. It was the first game, the first, like, big game in the playoffs I ever started. And I just, we just knew we had to go out there and work. How about the effort that you put in, two goals, including the game winner? Um, well, I, I just tried my hardest. I ran my butt off, and I, just, I didn't stop when there was only six seconds left. What was going through your mind when you hear the clock counting down, Connor gets that ball? I... Like, I knew Connor was going to look for me because we look for each other all the time. and We hook up a lot, and, you know, it, uh, I don't know, it was just, I just didn't even think about the time. I just kind of ran at the ball and dove for it. When you, he hit that ball to you, what were you thinking? Keep her coming, you going for the ball, what was going to happen? I don't really remember what I was thinking. I was just kind of just a little scared. I didn't know if I was going to get trucked or just miss him or miss the ball or something, but I just, I hit it in. As soon as you hit it, how'd you feel? Oh, I was so pumped. I just started sprinting towards the stands and you know, speeches and yelling. So pumped. District final against Avon. How big of a game is this? It's a huge game for me. Like, uh, three years ago was our last district final against Avon Lake. and I was uh, I was just on the sidelines just watching because I, I was technically on the team. starters and like one of the top guys on the team with Connor Coda and Andrew and it's just it's huge. How bad do you want Avon? I mean there's obviously that revenge there that they because they beat us in earlier in the season but I mean it's just another game now. Like that's in the past we just gotta look at the future. What's gonna be key to victory? 
I just, we, then we know they're going to come out and run at us like they did before, and we just got to keep our cool. Give me a prediction. Uh, I'm going to say 2-0. Connor, take me back to the district semi. How big of a game was that? You know, it was, it was a good game. I, I was kind of upset that we had to play it on junior high because it, it didn't really attest to our, like, the way we like to play. But, I mean, we it showed that we had heart and that we were able to win in tough situations, go go through adversity, and that's what I was proud of my team for, and Burke scoring four seconds left was amazing. Yeah, how crazy of a goal was that? I mean, ridiculous, but I was just coming back. I was dead tired. I didn't think the ball was about to bounce to me, but then when it did, I I mean, I actually I saw Burke out of the corner of my eye, and I knew we were going to score as soon as I saw him. I just lofted him the ball, and he made a great adjustment to head the ball into the net instead of volley it. It was, it was perfect. When you heard the counter, Counting down when the ball came to you, what was going through your mind? Actually, I didn't even hear the counter counting down, but uh, just it's still a game. I've still got one pass left to make, and that's all I thought is I've done this many times before. It's something that you can do, and I laid one off to Josh. Keeper coming out, him crashing in. That was sweet. I mean, that, the thing that I, just the adjustment he made, because I mean, you think you'd volley that shot. It's from the, about 18 yards out, and he headed it. And just to see that adjustment was outstanding. Against Avon. How big of a game is this? No, I'm pumped. I mean, it's one of the two teams that beat us, and I'd say Ignatius, almost a moral victory. So you say this is the only loss for us that that re was a real loss. Like, we we really knew we didn't do our best that game, and to be able to get revenge on the team, and I mean, I'm not worried about it. I think we're a better team. I think we'll be able to go out there as long as we take care of business. It shouldn't be a problem for us, but just got to match up with them. Don't, don't get into their habits. Sometimes they like to foul a little more. How bad do you want them? I want it bad. I mean, I, I'm the only kid on the team that's played in the district final, and I won. But I want it again. I want to, I want to win more with my best friends. What's going to be key to victory? Uh, winning the ball out of the air in the back. And I think just playing Amber soccer, because if we control the midfield, which usually is uh, open when Avon's playing a game, they usually leave the midfield open. And if we can play one-two touch, get the ball wide, cross it in, I, I think that's the key. Give me a prediction. Three of Amherst. You've experienced some big games and whatnot. How crazy of a game was that against Strongsville, especially the ending? I was really one of the more intense games I've played, and you know, I was really down to the wire last second. Both teams going hard the whole time. It was really a, it's a good game on both sides. How about the ending? Uh, it was a great ending with Brooklyn getting on the end of Connor's nice little pass there. Fans were going crazy. It was just a really great feeling at the end of that game to come out on top. When you heard the counter counting down, you see the ball go in, <laughs> keeper coming out, what was going through your mind? I was <laughs> no, just like, this looks like it might go in. Oh, it's in the goal. I was like, it's pretty crazy. Against Avon, how big of a game is this? Uh, it's going to be a big game. You know, we played them earlier in the year. Uh, didn't get a good result. We lost to them. So a little bit coming back. Got that a uh, little bit behind us. So we got that back of our minds, kind of thinking about it a little bit. And, you know, we have to win to go on. That's what we want. So we just got to keep winning. How bad do you want them? Well, I'm real bad. <laughs> What's going to be key to victory? Um... I think if Berkline stays hot and keeps scoring, that's going to be great for us. And uh, we just got to lock down their forward. I think he has a, a couple of goals, so I just got to watch out for him. Give me a prediction for the game. I'm going to go two to one us. Garrett, how crazy of a game was that against Toronto? <laughs> it was ridiculous. Um, I, like, 15 seconds left in the game, I go. I don't want to go to PKs because I usually I have top five, so I'd have to shoot one, and I go, I don't want to do that. And then as soon as Burke scored, I was just completely, I was going nuts. It was crazy. It, I, I still don't re really know how it happened. I was just completely blown away. When that ball got played up to Connor and the Connor's counting down, final 10 seconds, what was going through your mind? Well, I, I thought Connor was going to shoot it for sure. But then I hear I see Burke streaking down the middle, and there are three guys or two guys run straight at him. So I go pass it to Burke. He did, and Burke puts it away. He's still hot. So I was just completely excited. Punk. How big of a game is this against Avon? Really big. I mean, not only is it the district final, and we want to move on, but they beat us, and I don't like losing, and our whole team doesn't like losing. So. We want to not. Uh, we want to go back and get them again. Get some revenge on them. How bad you want them? <laughs> oh, really bad. Um, I mean, they were talking some smack in the first game, so and they deserve to. They beat us, but I want to come back this game and show them who's boss.
going to be key to victory. We got to we got to play like we got to pass. We can't just play long ball the whole time. We got to connect passes in the ground cuz when I watched them, their midfield was kind of wide open, and we have two of the best midfielders in the area and in the state, so I believe if we can control the midfield, play to the corners, and just keep the ball on the floor, we got a nice turf field to play on, so I think if we can just pass the ball around them, we'll be successful. Give me a prediction. <laughs> I think if that happens, if Burke stays hot, it could be anywhere from 2 nothing us to in. I, I think we could put three or four, maybe even five on them if we play as well as we can. Brett, the years you coached, the years you played, you ever had a crazier game than a game against Strongsville? Uh, we've had some crazy games. In fact, um, a lot of former players are rehashing some of the crazier games. Um, there was a game where we came back from three to one against Lorraine Catholic when they're state ranked, um, and we scored three goals in the last eight minutes. Uh, that was pretty impressive. Uh, and we had the, the 14 penalty kick game against Westlake to get to the district finals a couple years ago. So we've had some crazy games. I've never had a game come down to the last four seconds of overtime, of double overtime. That was, it was fun. It was fun. When the ball got played forward on a Connor's foot, Connor's counting down, what was going through your mind? Well, you know, I was screaming at Connor because you could see Josh Berkland making a run from 30 yards back, and he was wide open. And I was screaming at Connor, Burke's wide open, and I, he just looked, took a, a glance up and just one-timed it there, and it was a perfect ball. Um, I think Josh made an incredible adjustment to head it. You know, I thought he was going to try to, to shoot it, and the keeper was there. The last second he goes with the head, and uh, it was just pandemonium at that point. <laughs> How about just the, the way Josh has been working so hard? He got both goals there, the game winner. It, it's just amazing to me. I mean, I, I literally had the conversation. We were watching the girls play on the game before. Expressing a little bit of frustration at the fact that you only scored two goals and the all season, I said, "Hey, you know it's playoffs now. You know, who knows? You, maybe you're saving them all up for now." Um, you know, he goes out, he scores three, and then he scores two in the next game, including the game winner. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy for him. Uh, you know, it's it's bizarre that he doesn't have more goals. He just every time he makes a great shot, you know, keepers make great saves. He's a post. You know, he's been doing it all year. It's just the ball hasn't gone in the net. So. How big is this game against Avon? Uh, I mean, it's for the district championship. It's to keep playing. Uh, at this point, it's the biggest game of our season. Realistically, uh, probably the biggest game of my coaching career because I feel this team legitimately has a chance to go far in the playoffs. And you know, we went to the regionals before, but it was with a team that was it was that Cinderella story. I, you know, they were just happy to be there. This team really has a goal. So, in that sense, it's big. How bad do you guys want them? Uh, you know, we just want to win. You know, it doesn't matter the, the opponent at this point. Um, we're gonna play somebody good, and we, we just want to play it our soccer, um, play a good match, and, and, and hopefully emerge to victory. So the revenge isn't on your mind. Revenge, you know, I told the kids before the game, revenge has nothing to do with it. You know, like I, I try to get that out of the kids' minds because we're playing for something. You know, and, and we can play any team right now, and it doesn't matter if we have, you know, all that extra motivation. I think sometimes that's counterproductive. So our kids would just want to go out there, play soccer, have fun. Give me key to victory. Uh, key to victory, you know, we got to contain uh, Boyle. He, he's he's unreal. Uh, we got to find a way to crack their defense and, and, and sneak one past their keeper. They've got a phenomenal goalkeeper and they've got a, a, a big target up front. So if we can neutralize those those two players, I think we're good. Give me a prediction. Uh, prediction is going to be a battle, a low scoring game. I'm hoping we emerge. You know, I'm thinking 1 0, 2 1 would be nice. I'd like to win it in regulation. Uh, I have a feeling it might go to OT, though. Do you think you got any last-second shots left in you? Uh, I hope. I hope we have a lot. You know, I hope we don't have to, to get there, but um, if, if, if we're in that position, I, th I think we have to. That was the Amherst Comets. We are set and starting second half, opening minutes. A clean sheet for both teams. Amherst moving from right to left in their black uniforms with gold numerals and gold trim. Avon Eagles in their solid whites with purple numerals moving from left to right. Comes into Souders, flicks it forward to Berkline. The winner of this game will get the winner of Copley and Medina. Tuesday night, 7 p.m. at Bay High School. Currently, Medina is up 1-0 on Copley in the first half. Copley, the home team, the number one seed in that district. Both teams played to a scoreless, very physical draw back in September. So a big matchup going on there. We are scoreless here from Avon. Maximo Meggett picks up that ball. And the official's gonna stop the clock. 
We got an injured player, an Amherst player, down on the field on the far side. Is this Josh Burkline, I believe? I think it could be. On the field for the Comets, Connor Klakota, along with Andrew Souders, Mark Ferber, Bradley Meaden, and Marcus Schmitz in the midfield. In the back is Eric Armstrong, Jake McDonald, Dalton Sweet, and Garrett Klakota, Maxwell Meggett in goal. And Burkline is down on the field. Opening minutes here for the second half. For the Eagles, Nico Toledis along with Ryan Poyle are up front in the midfield. Brendan Cannon, Ryan Repas, Daniel Minotti, and Jack Poyle. And in the back, John DeMarco, Kevin Manicherry, Jess Miser, along with Kyle Lavelle and Austin Sani is in goal for the Eagles. As Cole Plum will check in as Burkline checks out. That's unfortunate for the Comets, one of the hottest players on the Amherst team right now. Seven goals on the year, six in their last three games. A goal in the last game of the year against state-ranked St. Ignatius, a hat-trick against Elyria in the sectionals, and then two goals including the game winner against Strongsville in the district semis. So Plum just checks in, flicks this ball on. Loose in midfield, won by Ryan Poyle. As Aaron Lazert scored the goal for Medina in the other district final game, who the winner of this will get. As Medina leads 1-0 over Copley. Two minutes here into the second half. Amherst with a throw in. Right side, Garrett Klakota. Throws it forward, knocked out of touch, and it will stay with the Comets on the right side. Connor Klakota will step over to take this long throw in. Just dumps it off to Garrett. Back to Connor. Connor Klakota going one on one. Top corner of the box. Now double team comes, tries to split. Good defense by the Eagles, and they'll clear it back out near midfield. Amherst again on the throw. Trying to bring numbers forward. See if Connor Klakota will take this long throw in again. Actually, no, Eric Armstrong's going to step up and take this throw in. Six players in the box for the Comets. Mark Ferber hanging out right around the D as well. Good long throw in. In the box, flicked on. Sandy's right there. Looked like Souders got on the end of that one, and a good save by Austin Sandy. Ryan Poyle giving chase. Dalton Sweet trying to shield it out. Goes off a of Sweet, then it went off a of Poyle last second. Throw in Comets. Unfortunate for Poyle there. Quick throw in, Plum with a flick, out of touch, off of Avon. Another quick throw in, Marcus Schmitz. Schmitz will leave it for Connor Klakota. Find Schmitz down the wing. Let's it go by, might have let it go too far. Nice save by Schmitz, but Sani is there again. Great save by Schmitz to get the cross off there. A little too close to the goalkeeper though. Sandy with a deep kick, comes loose. Toledis, through ball, looking for Poyle. A nice track back and a win by Eric Armstrong as Ryan Poyle making a run right behind him. Connor Klakota, good tackle by the Eagles. Avon trying to contain, contain possession, but lose it at midfield. Right side, Bradley Meaden. One right back by the Eagles, but then a Passing is a little bit off for both teams here in the early going. Through ball, looking for Poyle. Headed down by Armstrong. Ferber taking it wide. Up the wing to Plum. Flicked down by Klakota. Right back to Plum. Meaden. Ball for Plum. Loose ball. Finally cleared out. Good defense by DeMarco for the Eagles. Connor Klakota wins a loose ball, and he runs right into Kevin Manicherry, who is not afraid to go down. And the official just said, I think that's your last one. Manicherry already playing with a yellow as Connor Klakota is slow to get up after that tackle. 
And now he's back down again. That is not a good sign for the Comets. As we're going to have a stoppage with 34-51 to go, second half. Hi, this is Chris Dore, head soccer coach from Avon Boys Soccer, and you're watching Ohio Sports Net. This is Brett Thompson, head coach of the Amherst Soccer Team, and you're watching Ohio Sports Net. Hi, this is Josh Burkline from the Amherst Steel, and you're watching Ohio Sports Net. Not a good sign for Comets fans as Connor Klakota gets up and hobbles off under his own power after a very, very rough tackle by Kevin Menacheri, who did that to Klakota in the first half as well and drew a booking. This time the official gave him a hands crossed as like no more. And now it looks like the official wants to have a word with Austin Sani. So Klakota has checked out, but the official is talking with Sandy in the far corner before the restart. Unless he's letting him know that uh, your left back is on his last legs when it comes to challenges like that or, or what he's saying to him. There's been two bookings in the game, both via Avon. Nico Toledis took a yellow in the first half for an unsporting behavior and and a cherry took one for a dangerous tackle. And it looks like Sandy has something to say to Minichary here. Maybe he's telling him, he said, hey, the ref, let me know. No mas. It's uh, unfortunate for the Eagles. Very aggressive defender is Minichary. Off the restart, ball into the box. Nice diving header by Lavelle. One back, though. Ferber trying to get freed on the right side. Mark Ferber going to take it to the end line. Cuts it back. Couldn't line up a cross, though. Knocked out a touch. Throw in coming up for Amherst. And substitutions is Connor Klakota going to check back in, along with Garrett Klakota. Actually, Garrett Klakota just stepping forward. Connor Klakota came on side by side with his brother. No, actually, he did. Garrett Klakota came back in. So substitutions done. Six minutes in, second half. Long throw in, comes in, into the box. Headed out by Ryan Poyle. Long shot from the outside by Garrett Klakota. A little bit wide, out of touch. Goal kick coming up for the Eagles. The rate this game's going, I hate to say it, uh, I see overtime in our future, if not more. Both teams with very strong defense. Even though they have explosive offensive players, defense wins championships. McDonald with a clear for Amherst. Loose into the fence. Cole Plum gives chase, and Plum's going to win a loose ball. Cole Plum into the box, taking it on Sandy. A poor touch, though, and Sandy will come up and smother that one. And Cole Plum not happy with himself on that one. Had some freedom, and just the ball got away from him. Gave Sandy enough space to come out and smother it. Toledis, forward for Ryan Poyle. Nice step by Armstrong and clears it back up to Connor Klakota. Looking for some numbers. Will swing one all the way far side. Marcus Schmitz on an overlap. Has to track back to win it. Schmitz has it. Down the left side. Schmitz going at it with DeMarco. Wins the ball, but got a piece of DeMarco and a restart coming up for Avon. Good defense by the sophomore defender, John DeMarco. As Schmitz tried to use those long legs and reach around him and got a piece of DeMarco. Don't forget, folks, after the game, stay tuned for our JJHuddle.com player of the game. If you want to talk sports, you want to discuss tonight's game, you want to talk about the upcoming season, playoffs, everything, do it all at JJHuddle.com, the destination for Ohio's online sports community. JJHuddle.com features news, recruiting updates, scores, statistics, playoff brackets, and, of course, the world-famous J.J. Forums for 99 cents a month. Go to JJHuddle.com and get into the game. Amherst controls the ball midfield. 
as we have a scoreless draw here in the other district final where the winner of these two will meet. Copley in the final minute gets level at one with Medina. As Amherst builds it up, Sandy with the save. So 1-1, one, one, Copley and Medina, nil-nil here, Avon and Amherst. Sandy with the distribution off the drop kick. Minotti flicks it on. Toledis giving chase. Good win by McDonald. His ball will be played off of Avon, out of touch. Throw in coming up for the Comets. Dalton Sweet to midfield. Flicked on by Plum. Plum and Cannon going at it. Both teams again playing a little bit direct. Connor Kokoda loses his footing, but it comes over to Garrett Kokoda. Has players streaking in the middle. Garrett Kokoda looking for Connor, just missed him on a nice run. And the ball will be cleared out of touch by Minotti. Throw in coming up for the Comets. 10 minutes in, second half. Marcus Schmitz to take this long throw in for the Comets. Sandy stays, ball headed, out of touch. Over the end line, Cannon got it for the Eagles. It'll be a corner kick coming up for Amherst. Mark Ferber to take it. Ferber with a low one. Headed down by Lavelle. Went all the way down to the turf to win that header. Ferber into the box, headed away, comes to Poyle. Finds Minotti, his ball up the wing, trying to find Toledis, out of touch, throwing Amherst. Give Daniel Minotti a lot of credit on that one. Went in the header, kind of took one for the team there as he crashed into Marcus Schmitz, throw in by Schmitz. Headed right back to him. Sent a header into the middle. Comes under the foot of Ferber. Gets a little space. Mark Ferber. His shot blocked. Nice step up by Minicherry. Comes to Souders. His chip far side. A little bit too far. And Sandy will run it down and save it from going out for a corner. A quick punt. Flicked on. Comets can't save it. And it goes off of Amherst. It'll be a throw in coming up for the Eagles. We're in the 52nd minute. Scoreless. As Brendan Cannon to take this throw in. Comes in, loose in the sixth. Toledis! Nico Toledis, his eighth goal of the year with 28, 36 to go, second half. Avon strikes first. It's one of those ones where these long throw-ins are very dangerous. It came into the box. It fell down. Amherst unable to clear it. Popped right to Toledis, who just blasted one in from about 10 yards out. Gonna have to see how Amherst responds now. Comet's gonna try and pressure right away. Kokoda forward to Schmitz. Schmitz with a flick on. Comes to Berkline. Berkline flicks it over his head. Schmitz in the box! Marcus Schmitz, his shot blocked away. Good defense by DeMarco. And then Schmitz wanted a penalty afterwards as he and DeMarco got tangled up. Ball out of touch though, and it'll be a throw in coming up for the Comets. Official going to set up Marcus Schmitz, back him up almost about 10 yards. And Sandy will haul that one in off the throw in 
and trying to get another quick counter. Up there one-on-one, -on -one, looking for Poyle. It's going to bounce all the way down. Megan will come out top of the box and haul that one in. And a nice steal by Minotti off the build. Minotti and Sweet going at it. Nice track back by Dalton Sweet to win it, but loses it out of touch. Corner kick coming up for Avon. So the Eagles are picking up the pressure here. Got them one goal, and now they get a dangerous corner. And the student section right behind the Amherst goal being very, very vocal right now. Repas on the corner kick. Comes in, Maggot jumps up and snatches it out of the air. And a quick counter. Comets might have room, but the ball is a little bit too far for Connor Klakota as DeMarco a nice job to step up and poke it away. That ball just skipped a little bit too far from Connor Klakota. Klakota now has it. His ball far side looking for Schmitz. Headed back by DeMarco. Souders. Ferber. Klakota. Finds Burkline into the middle, looking for Schmitz. A nice step by Minotti to clear it away. Sweet, right back into the D. Deflected far side, Garrett Klakota comes up, wins it for the Comets. Into the middle, Souders trying to line up a shot. Nice possession. Far side, Meaden. Bradley Meaden to the end line. Comets finally get across a little bit too far. Marcus Schmitz will run it down. He'll play it down the end line and go out of touch. Goal kick coming up for Avon. 15 minutes in, second half. As Tony Toledis, freshman midfielder, will check into the game. Daniel Minotti will have a seat for the Eagles. Showing some good hustle. A pair of bookings was the only scoring in the first half, both by the Eagles. But so far, second half, it was Nico Toledis, unassisted. And that's where we stand, the Eagles 1-0. Toledis in the 52nd minute. Substitutions, Mark Matos checks into the game for the Comets. A whistle and a restart coming up for Amherst. Quick ball played all the way up. Connor Klakota's up there. And Lavelle wins it and clears it back to midfield for Avon. One by the Comets. Ferber, right side. Connor Klakota tracks back trying to win it. He laid off. Souders. Right side, Garrett Klakota. Cuts in. Nice spin move, but it couldn't get through a triple team. Amherst fans want a call. As, uh, that was a tough one. Garrett Klakota put him on the spin cycle and went down right at the top of the box. No whistle by the official. Off the throw in, comes in. Ferber. Back to Kokoda. Going to take it down. End line. Looking for a cross. Comes in. Headed out. Lavelle with the clear. Amherst wins it back. Into the middle. Ferber with some space. Swings the left side. Sweet. Dangerous ball. Sneaks over to Matos. Matos down the line. Sweet on an overlap. Dalton Sweet with a nice save and turn. But then the ball knocked off a Sweet. Out of touch. Avon throw in. Don't forget, fans, go to our Facebook page, Ohio Sports Net, for highlights and updates on all upcoming broadcasts. Become a fan on Facebook and also uh, follow us on Twitter. Ohio Sports Net is our handle. Tweet us with any updates you have on any of your teams, scores, anything you want to see for your school on Ohio Sports Net. Restart coming up for the Eagles. With 23 minutes to go, second half, Austin Sandy will take it, senior goalkeeper for the Eagles. Sandy's ball, loose in the middle, won by the Eagles, and then poked away. Comes to Klakota, 
Trying to get up the left side. DeMarco with a nice step. His ball out of touch, though. And it'll be a throw-in coming up for Amherst. Sweet into Souders. Sweet forward. Berkline gets knocked down in a late call and a whistle coming up. Restart for the Comets. Eric Armstrong will take this restart for Amherst. Armstrong's ball coming into the box. Sandy comes out, two-handed punch. It's still loose on the ground. Souders has it for the Comets. Takes it down into the corner, to the end line. His cross comes all the way over, nobody there, a little bit too far. And Berkline can't run it down, out of touch. Throw in coming up for the Eagles. Great run by Souders and a good cross, just a little too far, and nobody on the back side for the Comets. Berkline flicks this one out of touch, throw in again for the Eagles. Up the midfield, Ryan Poyle with a touch. Left side, Klakota and Jack Poyle going at it. Garrett Klakota, nice win. Meaden, his ball forward, knocked away and won by Avon. In the middle, Ryan Poyle. Swings it left side. Back into the middle for Ryan Poyle. He's loose into the box. Poyle right on and Meggett with a save. Actually, that was Cannon on the shot. Cannon put a good foot in it. We got a whistle and a restart. Foul coming up against the Comets. That was a nice buildup with Poyle, Repus, and Cannon. And Cannon got a good shot. Hit it right on Meggett, though. And we are midway through the second half. 1-0, Avon with the lead. Restart taken by Brennan Cannon. His left foot. Near Poyle, headed out by the Comets. Trying to get some numbers forward. A very tough tackle, and we got another booking coming up. This is going to be the third booking of the game against the Eagles. This one's going to go against Cannon. That's the second hard tackle of the game the official did not like. A little too aggressive there by Brendan Cannon, and he's going to draw the booking. As he joins Nico Toledis, along with Kevin Minicherry, in the book. Nineteen fifty-nine to go, second half. As Daniel Minotti, the freshman, will check in. Off the restart, ball comes in near the top of the box. Loose into the box. Connor Klakota giving chase. Ball knocked over the end line. Corner kick coming up for Amherst. Mark Ferber to take the corner. The official talking with some players in the box. Comes in, flicked on. Knocked out by Avon, though. Matos, cross, far side. One by Jack Poyle and poke back near midfield. Nico Toledis has it. Plays it off, Minotti. Nice move by Daniel Minotti. A forward to Nico Toledis. Andrew Souders tracks back and wins it. His ball into the middle, stolen by Avon. Forward, Nico Toledis lines up a left-footed shot, a little bit high and wide. A nice look by Toledis, already won in the goal for him, looking for a second there and just missed. Very fortunate there, Toledis. A loose ball came right to him, and he's not afraid to shoot it. Toledis now with eight goals on the year, one in this game. Cannon checks back in after that short break. As Miser will have a seat. Ball out of touch, throw in coming up for Avon. Not time to hit the panic button yet. It's only 1-0. 18 and a half to go, second half. But I'm pretty sure the Comets fans would love to see an equalizer 
as soon as possible. Avon continues to press. Scherer, lay it back to Lavelle. Forward to Cannon. Left side, Minichari. Long ball, looking for Ryan Poyle. Down the wing, Armstrong comes over. Wins it, touches it back up. Garrett Klakota, very aggressive challenge. Will continue the attack. In the middle, Ferber. We got a whistle and a restart coming up, and now this one's a little too aggressive against Amherst. They didn't like that call. Bradley Meaden called for that one. That one was a lot softer than the one Garrett Klakota just did. Off the restart, Brendan Cannon puts a left foot into it. Drives it to the D, flicked on by Repas. Knocked out by Souders. Klakota, nice flick, Mados has space. And Cannon, a nice hustle to come over and knock that one out of touch. We got a whistle and a substitution coming in for the Comets. Looks like Tommy Wesley checks into the game. Junior for the Comets. Matos on the throw. And we got a poor throw in called against the Comets. Seen more poor throw ins whistled in this game than I think I've seen all season. Off the header, flicked on by Burkline and Klakota. Cannon will clear forward. Loose at midfield. Ferber lays it off to Wesley. Wesley gets it back. Drives one in the middle. Flicked on. Klakota with a challenge. Matos giving chase. Matos trying to cut into the box. Loose. And Sandy calls off to Marco and picks up the loose ball. Smart play by the senior goalkeeper and even smarter by the sophomore defender to listen to his goalkeeper. Toledis picks up the loose ball, forward for Poyle. Cleared and then finally out and a counter for the Comets. Ferber, right side a little bit too far for Wesley. Good thought, ball on the turf here travels a lot faster and just skipped out of touch. Amherst wins it back though, Ferber with another chance. Into the middle, Burke line. Tackle it away, back to midfield. Garrick Lakota, up to Connor. Connor Lakota going one on one with Minicherry. Chips it forward. Knocked down, Connor Lakota wins it back. Ball into the middle. Tomatoes trying to let up a shot. Good defense and cleared out by Avon. DeMarco got on that one. Sweet. Tomatoes. Trying to find Ferber on an overlap, and Minotti will just concede a throw in. 15 minutes to go, second half, 1 0, Avon leads. Matos gets it into Souders. Matos, his cross into the six. Headed down, but not out. Comes right back, Souders again, a low ball, one, and then cleared out by Cannon. Garrett Klakota down the right side for Connor Klakota. Good defense by Minicherry. He wanted a throw in, but it's gonna be Amherst ball. Amherst looks like they're starting to flood the box a little bit more on these throw ins. Klakota gets it in. Sandy comes out, two handed punch. It's loose on the ground. Cannon with a whiff, and then tracks it down and then just clears it out of touch, concedes another throw in. Good hustle after the initial miss. Throw in cleared out by the Avon defense. Up near Poyle. Poyle trying to get free. McDonald steps over, just clears it out of touch, and will give a throw in to Avon right around midfield. 13 and a half to go, second half. Stolen by Ferber. Burkline trying to get Klakota knocked away. Ball loose. Nice win by Souders. Couldn't find a teammate, though. 
Ferber's header. Comes near side, Amados. Plays it off to Sweet. Toledus with good hustle and Sweet stole it away. Amados. Souders. Pakoda. Ferber. Right side to Wesley. Souders. Good build by the Comets. Can't get an offensive scoring opportunity though and the ball will just be cleared all the way back deep down. Nobody there for Avon with 12 and a half to go, second half. Jake McDonald runs it down. He'll have it, swing it right side, Eric Armstrong. Into the middle, Klakota. Toledus wins the loose ball. Scherer plays it all the way back. Sandy will just hit a deep ball near midfield. Wesley off the feed from Connor Klakota. Right back to Wesley. Trying to force the passes through and Avon shutting down all the passing lanes. Swung it over near side, a sweep. His chip down the wing. Berkline going to give chase. Josh Berkline, a nice save. Keeps it in. His cross. Top of the box. Ferber swings it right side. Garrett Klakota steps back. Fakes a chip. Touches it down the wing to Connor Klakota. Into the corner with Menacheri on him. Good defense by Kevin Menacheri. Will not let Connor Klakota get off. Finally a cross off and right on and Sandy is there. Great defense there by Kevin Manicheri, senior defender. Long punt, flick back, Meggett will have it. 11 minutes to go, second half. 1-0 Avon. The winner gets the winner of Medina and Copley. Last we heard it was tied at one at halftime. Connor Klakota controls his ball far side. Matos behind the defense. Ball a little bit too far, though. He's going to try and track it down and cannot save it. It'll go over the end line. A nice look by the Comets. Ball just had a little too much pace on it. Goal kick coming up for Avon. Approaching the final 10 minutes, second half, as Tony Toledis is set to check in for the Eagles. Also, Marcus Schmitz and Bradley Meaden back in for the Comets. Really good opportunities in the opening minutes for the Comets. Sandy made a couple really good saves. And since then, the scoring opportunities have been far and few between. A long ball here up the goal kick. Great defense by McDonald as Poyle runs into him and knocks him down. As just when it looked like Ryan Poyle was going to sneak through. Great defense by Jake McDonald, senior defender. Got in there, got a piece, and got fouled. Souders up to Ferber. Ferber has it knocked out of touch. Throw in, coming up for the Comets. Up the wing, nobody there. Menacheri with a header and then cleared out. To McDonald. Heads it over to Sweet. Dalton Sweet playing forward, looking for Connor Klakota. And Will Scherer, the freshman defender, is there to clear it away twice. Comes to Minotti. Nice turn by Minotti. And then Avon will just hit a long ball up. Poyle, his long ball, a little bit too far. He's looking for Tony Toledis, and Meggett will have it. Inside nine minutes. See how soon before the Comets start sending extra numbers up. Ball flicked on, Menacheri. A nice clear as he got run into, and he's slow to get up. Now he's back up, Ferber. Ball comes to Souders, his ball knocked away. Tony Toledis, nice step through, but Souders tracks back to win it for the Comets. Avon just putting up a brick wall in the back right now. 
Comets can't get any through balls through to teammates. Souders, right side. Ball gets swung over to Schmitz. He flicks it forward. Connor Klakota gets run into from behind. The official said no call. Cleared out by the Eagles. Poyle swings it over. Cannon on overlap. Schmitz got a foot in there. Now it's a foot race. Sweet's going to run it down and plays it off a cannon. Throw in coming up for the Comets. Avon Eagles 17-0-1 on the year. Amherst 15-2-1. Neither one of them wants their season to end tonight. Unfortunately, that's what we got to do. One goes home, one advances to the regional semifinals Tuesday at Bay Village to play the winner of Medina and Copley. Amherst looking for the equalizer. Souders plays it up the left side for Schmitz. Minotti will concede a throw in. And we got substitutions coming into the game. Jack Poyle back in for the Eagles. And Cole Plum will check in for the Comets. And they're actually going to take a defender out. So here we go with seven minutes to go. They're going to go with three in the back are the Comets. An extra striker is up there in Cole Plum. Off throw in, ball flicked out of touch. Another throw in coming up for Schmitz. So you got Plum, Burkline, and Klakota up front with Meaden, Souders, Ferber, and Schmitz in the midfield. Schmitz, long throw in, comes in near the six. Flicked and then cleared out. Good defense by the Eagles. Sweet will step over. His ball forward, nobody there. And DeMarco will just let it go out of touch. Smart play by John DeMarco. Throw in Eagles. Boyle couldn't control that one. Throwing going to go right back to the Comets. Six minutes now and counting. Second half. Good step by Minotti. Got in front of Souders. Another throw in for Schmitz. Souders with a flick. Cannon with a clear. Toledis will head it out of touch. And the Eagles, they'll be happy with this. Just keep the ball over on the sideline. Comes into Connor Klakota. Play one up the left side. Burkline going to give chase with DeMarco. Burkline wins it. Josh Burkline with a double team on him. Trying to fight through. DeMarco wins it and clears it up the wing. Nice defense by the sophomore. Nico Toledis. Has it knocked away, but then cleared out by Minotti for the Eagles. Armstrong. Hits it right into Nico Toledis on the clear. And a nice play by Maximo Megan to come out as Toledis was going to walk in on goal. If not, smart play by the senior goalkeeper. But that actually hurts the Comets even more. It's going to kill some time and give Avon the ball on the throw in with five minutes now and counting to go second half. Minotti, right side, into the middle, all the way through, a shot by Jack Poyle, a little bit high and wide. How that ball snuck all the way through, I don't know. Goal kick coming up for the Comets. With 26 minutes to go, second half, Copley is now taking the lead 2-1 to one over Medina. So if it stood the way it is right now, it would be Copley and Avon in the regional semifinal at Bay on Tuesday. Amherst Comets have four minutes and change to try and change that. Out of touch, Avon throw in. Toledis flicks it over his head. Poyle with a flick. Meggett will have it. Quick throw right side. Ball skips a little bit too far for Meaden. Minicherry steps up in a hard collision. Ball forward, Toledis. Right side to Minotti, skips over his foot, out of touch. Throw in Comets. Souders. Forward for Plum, and Sherrill will just concede a throw. Souders gets it into Kokoda. Back to Souders. Middle to Burke line. Souders. Throw in Comets. 
Lakota going to line up for this one with 3.20 to go. Got to start getting all the numbers forward if you're a Comet fan. That's what Connor Lakota is saying, saying get in the box. Long throw, comes in, flicked on, loose in the six. Nobody can get their feet on it and finally poked wide and Sandy will go over and pick it up. And very fortunate for Sandy, his whole body went out of the box but kept his hands in the ball inside and will redistribute. Amherst just couldn't get a foot on that loose ball. Eagles fortunate to clear it wide. Now inside three minutes. Long ball forward. Connor Klakota gives chase. Good job by Kyle Lavelle to come over and head it out of touch. But another long throw in coming up for the Comets. Now they're starting to put a lot of numbers forward. They're actually leaving two players back. Klakota, long throw into the box. Flicked on. Still loose. Headed. Ferber. Sandy's there. Two thirteen and counting. Comets getting chances, running out of time though. Sweet. As Nico to lead us all over and we'll just play it back to Megat. Megat's ball skips towards midfield. Flicked on by Meaden. Burkline gonna give chase. Nice step by Lavelle. Still loose. Schmitz forward. Souders now controls for Amherst. Right side, Ferber. Bradley Meaden. Cross into the box. Headed straight up. Good job by DeMarco for the Eagles. Souders. A nice save. Andrew Souders is loose down the left wing. His cross headed away as Poyle is all the way back there on defense. Shot coming from the outside, knocked down. Connor Klakota shot right on, and Sandy is there, and will smother it with a minute 11 to go. If you're a Comet fan, that's what you want. Connor Klakota, a loose shot, top of the box. Kind of had to rush it with defenders crashing all over him. And Sandy made the save, so we're inside a minute. Comet's got to push everybody forward. Get that equalizer. Great pressure by Jack Poyle. As he and Garrett Klakota kind of went at it there. Loose ball comes down to Megat. 43 seconds to go. Long ball forward, headed down by Ryan Poyle. Schmitz. Long ball, Lavelle will just pop it up. And the Comets will let it go out of touch. One last possible chance here. Marcus Schmitz gonna come over to take this long throw in inside 25 seconds. Schmitz ball comes into the box. Headed down. Sweet pops it over. Connor Klakota has it knocked away by DeMarco. Nine seconds to go. Comets one last chance. Connor Klakota throws in near the six. Comes out. Megan a long shot. Deflected wide. And the final seconds tick away. And the Avon Eagles are going to win the Rocky River District and advance to the regional semifinals at Bay High School, Tuesday evening, November 1st, the winner of Copley and Medina will be their opponent. And a great season by the Amherst Comets. You can't say enough. Coach Thompson, Andrew Souders, Connor Klakota, Josh Berkline, Marcus Schmitz, Mark Ferber, Mark Matos, along with Jake McDonald, Eric Armstrong, Bradley Meaden, Maximo Megat, Dean Coglin, Nico Malabebic, Robbie Kortz, Casey Reed, and Ryan Lamb are the, all the seniors on the Comet roster. A great season. They're going to finish at 15, 3, and 1. Unfortunately, two of those losses came right on this same field to these Avon Eagles as a clean sheet today put up by Austin Sani and the Avon Eagles, they advance the Tuesday's regional semifinal. We're gonna pick a JJHuddle.com player of the game. I, I think there's gotta be almost two players here. Two players really stood out. Kevin Manicherry played a very, very physical defense for the Eagles. He got booked on one tackle on Connor Klakota. 
nearly got a second yellow on a second one, but played very, very tight on that left side. And then give all the hustle in the world to Nico Toledis in the right place at the right time for his eighth goal of the year, the only goal of the game. Those are our co-players of the game by JJHuddle.com. You want to talk sports, you want to discuss tonight's game, you want to talk about the upcoming season, playoffs, championships, and everything, do it all at JJHuddle.com, the destination for Ohio's only online sports community. JJHuddle.com features news, scores, statistics, recruiting updates, and, of course, the world-famous JJ Forums. For 99 cents a month, go to JJHuddle.com and get into the game. Final score here again tonight, Division I. District final from Avon, Ohio. The Avon Eagles won. The Amherst Comets nil. Avon will advance to the regional semifinals Tuesday, November 1st at Bay Village. And the last score we heard, it was 2-1 Copley. So check uh, OSHA.org and also go to OhioSportsNet.tv for all updates coming up on future games. Join us tomorrow night, Friday, October 28th, as we do high school football week 10. Two undefeated teams at 8 no Cleveland Heights and Maple Heights will go at it. Tape delay, 11 o'clock here on OhioSportsNet.tv. And also, Saturday will be our final live stream of the fall season. District final, girls out of the Kent District, Division One, The number one seed, Brexville Bees, host the Solon Comets, number three earlier in the year. Brexville beat Solon 1-0 on their field. And Solon's going to look for revenge in the district final there. 3 p.m. kickoff time on Saturday. For cameramen Keith Allen and Demetrius Hudson and guru and replay specialist Steve Peters, the producer. I'm Kyle Goodwin saying final score again tonight. Avon 1, Amherst nil. Have a good night from Ohio Sportsnet.